Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, today marks the 45th anniversary of my country joining the United Nations. Over the past 45 years, the United Nations, other international organizations and friendly countries have helped Maldives to achieve enormous progress. For that, I would like to thank you today. Thank you. I could stand here and tell you that the Maldives is progressing well towards the Millennium Development Goals. I could explain that the Maldives has already achieved five out of the eight MDG ahead of the 2015 deadline, making it South Asia's only MDG plus country. I could talk about our achievements across eradication of poverty, primary education, reducing child mortality, maternal health, and combating HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. However, I prefer to use the opportunity provided by today's high-level event to give this August gathering a sense of enormous challenges that the Maldives faces in continuing and consolidating its positive trajectory. Tragic events like the 2004 Asian tsunami remind us that progress towards MDGs should never be taken for granted. Improvements and successes that have taken years to accumulate can easily be put into reverse unless we remain vigilant and prepared to respond to such extreme events, natural or man-made. Mr. President, the Maldives faces three broad horizontal challenges and a number of challenges specific to certain MDGs. First, in parallel with our socio-economic drive towards the MDGs, the Maldives is also struggling with the political imperative of consolidating democracy and integrating the concepts of human rights, rule of law, international consciousness. We are not unique in this. All countries in transition experience an inherent tension between the past and the future, between those segments of the population that have benefited from and would prefer a return to the old system, and those parts of society who are impatient for real change and a fairer, more just society. This underlying tension, coupled with related challenges such as the rise of religious extremism, has important implications not only for democratic consolidation, but also for our efforts to achieve Millennium Development Goals. This is because the government's approach to development is premised on empowering the people and giving them the freedom and the opportunities to build and better their lives. Promoting human rights, decentralization of the government and administration, privatization and redistribution, these are the foundations of government policy. But such policies are also a clear threat to the powerful vested interests that once controlled the country. Second, and linked with the country's political challenges, is the unfortunate fact that the Maldives is struggling to consolidate democracy and rule of law at a time when the macroeconomic situation remains precarious. This was caused by extravagant spending by the former government in the run-up to the 2008 elections, coupled with the after-effects of the tsunami and the onset of the global financial crisis. In consultation with the International Monetary Fund, the government has taken a wide range of steps to confront this problem. An outcome of these efforts will determine the achievement of the Millennium Development Goals and our people's broader development aspirations. For example, pressures on the national budget are already having a negative impact on the health and education sectors. A third broad development challenge facing the country is our impending graduation at the end of this year from the UN's list of least developed countries. This will have enormous implications for the Maldives economy and for our continued socio-economic development. Despite this, we have welcomed graduation as a reflection of our progress over many years and as a start of a new phase in our national development. That said, it would not only be wrong, but also dangerous to assume that the Maldives' well-documented vulnerabilities as a small island developing nation will disappear the moment we are recognized as a middle-income country. Indeed, 
No one would question the fact that Maldives remains acutely vulnerable at economic, commercial, social and environmental levels. Thus the question is, how might we square the circle? How can we agree that graduation is a positive development, something to be welcomed, while at the same time conceding that key vulnerabilities remain and that small island states like Maldives will continue to need support if we are to meet the MDGs? The answer to us is clear. There is a need to be a far better, more efficient, more targeted and more measurable system of United Nations support for small island developing nations. This reform system must include a formal, transparent category for small island developing states. Mr. President, before concluding, I want to briefly touch on two MDGs where the Maldives, relatively speaking, has made less progress, namely MDG 3 on achieving gender equality and women's empowerment, and MDG 7 on ensuring environmental sustainability. Overall, the gender gap in the Maldives is closing, albeit perhaps slower than is necessary, necessary to meet this MDG by 2015. Cultural and social norms in the country in certain circumstances create obstacles to women's equal participation in society. While isolated and a lack of access to resources, educational and employment opportunities likewise pose major challenges, especially for girls and women. The creation of space and opportunities for women to contribute to development is a policy priority for the government. Gender mainstreaming is now obligatory across all government policy areas, while new laws are being prepared to combat discrimination and violence against women. Environmental sustainability is one of the most fundamental problems the Maldives, in the Maldives, challenging our basic right to life. The country has considerable ground to cover to achieve MDG 7. The Maldives is determined to play its part. Protecting the environment is a priority for the government. And last year, we announced plans to become the world's first carbon neutral country. However, the transnational nature of environmental harm means we cannot win this battle alone. We need the commitment and support of the international community, especially in the context of climate change. Thank you. I thank the Vice President.